from Bahrain, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE coverage here in Bahrain for AWS Summit. Cloud computing's changing the landscape, startups, business, government, and society. We're here with a special guest, His Excellency, Amen Tarafik. Almoyad, thank you very much. Thanks for coming, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And of course, Max Peterson, Vice President of International Sales, Worldwide Public Sector for Amazon Web Good Services. Good to be here, John. Your Excellency, this program you're doing with Amazon, this MOU you signed, is interesting. I want to unpack it because it speaks to the bigger picture of how the region is shaped by its generational shift of cloud computing and the people here. Right. This is a really big part of this modernization plan. No question, no question. So, so the program that the, the government adopted, so Vision 2030, which was adopted a while ago, is based on one premise, one key premise, that the government is going to move from operator to regulator, and our focus would be to focus on and, and establish, create almost, um, a, an open, just, competitive environment. So the idea is for us to provide the, the platform and then allow the meritocratic system to, to let those that can aspire to opportunities and, and reach these opportunities come up through the system. Um, so this program really sets the stage to, to get a new level going. Explain the difference with this program and why it's different than some of the things we've been hearing. We saw a cloud computing degree coming out of the University of Bahrain. Right. We're seeing a lot of job skill training. This is different. Mm -hmm. This is a unique thing. Can right. you give a more detail sure. around sure, sure, how sure, it sure. works? Yeah. So what we're doing is we're looking at very quick wins. And for us, six months, so for somebody to spend six months, one year in Amazon is a very quick win. Um, this is not an extended degree. Um, what this is, is it's an, op an opportunity to interact with um, the best of the best in, in, in their, their world sector. They, and, and to, honestly, it's, it's almost like a, a reset, where what Max and I were talking about earlier is somebody that spends a year with Amazon, I think that something happens to the pulse rate. All right, so your pulse <laughs> literally starts to beat Max much knows faster, all about right? That. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so so uh, we hear about their traveling patterns, and that, that in itself um, is, is amazing. So in any case, so the reason it's different from a degree is it gives you real life vocational um, uh, experience. It gives you the networki networking opportunity. It gives you the lifestyle exposure. Um, and then it gives you the shortcuts in, in organizations. So you're exposing them to the excellence of what a culture looks like. Exactly. Amazon, in this case, they're hard charging, they're fast. If anyone who's worked with Amazon knows exactly. that they move pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But they're disciplined. Yes. It's a world-class organization. Right, right, right. It's like a sports team being promoted to varsity or the pro team. Exactly. Work their way up from the, from the entry level. So maybe, maybe the difference as well is, um, in this sort of program, it's sink or swim. They, it, it's really as simple as that. I mean, you need to hit the ground running and, 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 and take off. Um, maybe with a degree, it's much less so. With a degree, you know, you, you go through your first year, your second year, your sophomore, and so on. They, they, so what we do want, uh, what we want is, we want our youth to hit the ground running. Um, we want very quick wins, and I have no doubt that, that um, once the first tranche, first team, goes out to Amazon, comes back, I'm sure that the ripple effect that you see in the industry and, and you see in the marketplace will be tremendous. Yeah. Max, what's We're your take excited. on this? Because obviously you're on the Amazon side. Are you taking them in uh, Amazon Web Services here in Bahrain or is it outside corporate headquarters in Seattle? Is there a def definition good. around? All good questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we're excited to be the first company that has partnered uh, with the ministry on this effort. Um, we're sure many others are going to join, but we're excited to be first. Um, I think what makes it different um, is the aspect of experiential. There's a lot of experiential learning that's going on, different than the academic learning. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, equally or maybe even more necessary is the, the sort of organizational and cultural learning. Mm -hmm. Just what does it take to operate right at, at uh, world scale or at pace? Mm -hmm. And then to be able to bring yeah. that back to the region We'll, we'll do that wherever we've got the right mix of skills. So yeah. it could be in Bahrain, where we've got a big office now. It could be in London, could be Washington, D.C., could be Seattle. Your Excellency, we always talk about on theCUBE over the years, um, tech athletes. Because, um, you know, you, to be an athlete, 
you got to have durability, right? intelligence, mm -hmm. stability. Being a tech athlete, the travel schedules, we were just joking last night about it, I mentioned it, but also the intelligence and the integrity sure. to do this at this speed. So this is kind of, a love, I love the theme, so I want you to elaborate why this connects in with your vision and how, this, how did this idea get started? What was the, the, what was the origination around this effort? So, so initially, the, the, um, again, if, if one takes a step back, we started experimenting um, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, the, with the sports sector. So what we were doing with the sports sector, because it was a much smaller sector, they, they, what we're trying to experiment there is if you were to allow our athletes to interact with the best in class, they, what would happen? Would they live up to that experience or not? And so one of the segments that we were looking at is, for example, triathlons. So, so about two years ago, the sport so as, for triathlons in general just simply didn't exist in the region. So two, maximum three years ago, they, they just, they, they yeah. were non-existent. So His Highness um, had ordered that um, we go ahead and see if we can develop this and see if we can develop the athletes for it. And so what we needed to do essentially was... Find the them, athletes. Is find the athletes, <laughs> exactly. Send them out. We did a few uh, triathlons. They did Kuna and, and Florida, came back, um, loved it. The, the addiction and the adrenaline kicked in. Yeah. They, and then we started arranging uh, duathlons and then triathletes um, here in, in, in Bahrain. Um, of course, I, I don't know if you know this, um, a year, fast forward, a year and a half later, and BE13, which is our triathlon, uh, triathlon team, is number one in the world. Um, simply, it's, it's number one in the world. All right, now we're doing this, we tried this with biking. Um, so, so we sent a team to the Tour de France and we started to do exactly the same thing. They, we were aspiring to, to, to look at greats like Sky Team and the rest um, and just learn from them, imitate and then innovate and, and, and so hopefully exceed. So well, if you have to have the talent to begin right. with, yeah. your theory is put them in, let them see it Yes. and they'll either level up or they won't. Right, it's exactly. self-selection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, no question. And you it, want to bring that formula yeah. to tech. It's pure meritocratic uh, sink or swim. They, they, so we've got, so there's two, um, uh, there, there's two phrases that we live by, all right? So number one, our role is open, competitive, just environment. That's it, all right? They, the number two is we open doors with no hand-holding, simply no hand-holding. But we'll get you the opportunity. But if Amazon calls us and says participant number 606 or, or whatever isn't uh, up to the cut, then they're not up to the cut. And what our youth have proven to us time after time yeah. is they're always up to the cut. As long as you make that clear, um, they, they, they live up to The expectation defines the experience. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you say this is what, the, what it is. Right. Right, right, right. You could swim or you can sink. Exactly. Your choice. Exactly. People will tap out. Yeah. They won't even jump yeah, yeah. in. I <laughs> like the tech athletes piece. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, absolutely. I mean, a lot of tech athletes, I mean, it takes a lot of energy. It is, like you said, you don't know what it takes to build a company. Right, exactly. It's really hard. Exactly. I mean, it's exactly. not easy. I, it is. And the thing that, um, just like this program, the thing that was interesting about the uh, University of Bahrain, idea was they're going to try and immerse everybody right. because cloud and technology now is immersed in any in any field i mean anything sure. becomes digital and we were talking earlier about uh, esports so mm -hmm. you need a whole bunch of great tech athletes to start bringing esports absolutely uh, services to the world absolutely do yeah. you see esports yeah no doubt so, yeah 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 they they so what we did on friday is um, we signed the first agreement. This is the first time that a region hosts, um, we're hosting Blast Pros finals in Bahrain. This is going to be on the 13th and the 14th of December, and that's running, streaming on Twitch. Um, so we're, we're excited. We're excited to be doing this with the guys at Blast Pro, and we're excited to be using Amazon's infrastructure to do it. Um, so yes, absolutely, there, there's, there's amazing things to be, to be seen in, in eSports, and we're excited. This is awesome, digital disruption. You guys have been so proactive on this. I was commenting this morning on, on Twitter, um, it was an, um, then stats went out about entrepreneurship uh, in Silicon Valley in the US, 51% of all ventures fail. And there's some other ones, 4% become unicorns. But it was all about optionality, et cetera, et cetera. And entrepreneurs are about getting on the right wave. Right. And falling and trying again. Hmm. And this is really, you guys have been very proactive on right. this. Right, so that's exactly why we think that sports plays a, plays a big role. 
Um, so the, the idea behind the program was simply to gamify everything. They, they, the idea between the, behind this program, the idea behind adopting the new bankruptcy law in Bahrain um, and, and the new reform uh, regulations that are coming in, all we're doing is gamifying things. What we're simply saying is when you fall, it's okay to fall. As long as you get back up and hit the ground running once again, we're okay with that. Um, so, so you'll start to hear phrases that are pretty interesting. So like I said, with, with, um, with the entrepreneurships, what we're looking at is unlocking levels. All right, so we're gamifying. <laughs> they, they, with education, we're doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. We're looking at vocational training that where you get to unlock levels. Um, so, so yeah, so as long as people know that yeah. the name of the game is just to stay in the game. <laughs> they, they, and then outpace everybody else. And the, fun and the funding's been fantastic. You guys have been supporting it Absolutely. with resources. Mm -hmm. Now that the region's up and running, Max, you feel good about um, the development so far with the new region? Uh, Therese was just on earlier, she mentioned uh, first day they, they turned it on, a bunch of companies were launched already. Well, the, the, uh, besides the cannons and the confetti that shot out today <laughs> uh, at the summit, the other exciting things, I think when we launched the region, we had over 350 different uh, companies, many small businesses, small and medium enterprises that put their offerings into the AWS marketplace. So when it was launched, anybody in the region, anybody in Bahrain, could literally turn on 1,700 different types of uh, software solutions at the push of a button. So I think that's big. I think we heard um, how 35 local companies have created uh, migration offerings and fast start offerings. Uh, we heard from one great entrepreneur on stage today, and we heard from government um, about how government's operating faster than business. No I think Sheikh Salman threw down a bit of a challenge mm -hmm. to, uh, <laughs> to the rest of uh, the, the government and uh, uh, state enterprises and even corporations. And then of course, I think we saw uh, the, the, the digital bank of the future from Bank ABC right. with their first virtual banking assistant uh, up on stage who, by the way, lives in the cloud over Bahrain. Yeah, digital employee, we had a great chat about that. This speaks to the generational shift. This is something that's going to be an interesting footnote in history. The sea change around expectations, you brought this up earlier, I think this is important. The younger generation, they just, they want the world to be at a different speed. And they don't want any tolerant blockers in their way. Mm -hmm. And so whoever can be out front on setting up the environment, whether it's society, government, the citizens for services, Money making potential. Banks got to operate. So, this is the replatforming of society is happening. This no is question, yeah, no question. I mean, I'll, I'll give you just the, the um, when you compare ministries, when you compare government entities, they, you would walk in and you'd assume the, the ultra bureaucratic system is still in place, they, where you've got to go through tiers and so on and so forth. Um, as far as the youth at the Ministry of Youth is involved, um, these guys are running things with chats. We've got internal chat systems. And so there is no memo writing process where you then have to escalate it and then it goes to the minister's office and so on. Absolutely not. These guys are, are on the likes of Slack, the likes of Teams or Microsoft and so on. And, and that's how government is run. Max, emails for old people like us. Uh, hey, modern, you know? digi modern digital governments are redesigning the way all this stuff works. <laughs> And it doesn't, the thing that's interesting to me, right, is it doesn't just impact these things that you would think of as tech. I, I thought the example of going from 130 days to five days, right, for permitting approvals. Yeah, yeah for building permits, uh, sure. I mean, it, that takes out a massive amount of inefficiency from the industry, right? And, and it enables that very industry to then move faster instead of government you know, as, as a blocker to so many of these exactly. things becomes an enabler. And I think it's that um, sort of that attitude about modernize, you know, uh, customer focused or citizen focused yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that is the, the hallmark of, of what, you know, folks are doing now to make a difference. Well, thanks for coming in, sharing the insights. Your Excellency, great to see you. Uh, one final question, take a minute to explain to the folks, what is the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affair What's the charter? Are you going to add sure. tech athletes to the mix now that we kind of define that term? But mm -hmm. take a minute to tech explain. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. So, so the vast majority of the population um, is under the age of 35. The ministry's mandate is to make sure that 
anybody within that constituency, their touch points are being managed in, a, in, a, in, a, in the right way. So our job, very, very simply, is to, to be effectively the, the, um, the change agent for them, number one, and number two, to protect their interests. So, so we're the ones that are negotiating regulations that come in, mm -hmm. but what touch point really is relevant? I mean, we're negotiating new laws that, that impact youth uh, when it comes to their trades, new laws that, that impact their uh, youth when it comes to um, their rights, um, new whether laws. Whether it's culture or art or whatever. Any touch points. So, so effectively, uh, we're, we're customer relations for youth, um, so, or client relations for youth. So that's that from, yeah. from one perspective. With regards to sports, we're simply regulators. So what we're doing is we're moving from a, an operator model to a regulator model. So, and and we're, what we're trying, trying to do is we're trying to create a sports industry. So instead of us focusing on the actual tournament itself only, we're looking at sports diplomacy, we're looking at, at sports industry, we're looking at uh, human performance uh, and, and things like that. So, so any sectors that we can catalyze to grow in Bahrain, um, that relates in any way, shape, or form to sports, whether it was medicinal, medicinal development, technological development, regulations, or otherwise, that falls under Ministry of Youth and Sports. You're charged to look at the whole individual across all spectrums, exactly. touch points. Exactly. So, awesome. so we're a horizontal as opposed to a vertical. You're excellent. Great to have you on theCUBE. Great to topic. Here. Could talk about it forever. Thanks. We love sports, of course, on theCUBE. We love talking sports, Max. You're a tech athlete. I'm a tech <laughs> athlete. I learned that today. <laughs> you go from city Brilliant. to city, hit a home run everywhere you go. I'm looking for the next league to compete in. Guys, thanks so much for the insights. Cube coverage here at AWS Summit in Bahrain. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.